Mandrake, water is the source of all life. Seven-tenths of this Earth's surface is water. Why do you realize that 70% of you is water? Oh, God. And as human beings, you and I need fresh, pure water to replenish our precious bodily fluids. Yes. Are you beginning to understand? Yes. Kind of a strange opening. Yes, well, one of my favorite movies. I really like Stanley Kubrick. Today, yes, we are going to be talking about precious bodily fluids, but your car's precious bodily fluids and how to check them. Let's get to it. First on our list today on this General Motors 2.4 liter is the engine oil. Make sure the engine is off when you check this. The very best time to check the oil is first thing in the morning before you started the car, and that's about the best reading you're ever going to get. So let's start here. All right. Stay focused on the dipstick. You want to pull the dipstick and then clean it off. Focus. Then put it back in. Make sure it's all the way down. This car has plenty of oil in it. Um, what I'm seeing here is that this crosshatch area is pretty much the area where the oil should be. Um, I'm gonna go out on a leap here and say each one of these dots represents one quarter of one quart. So if you're like say this dot right here you might need half a quart to get you full. If it's all the way down to here add a quart and you're full. You do not want to overfill this. You want to make sure your oil level is right there not above it. You go above it you could actually cause worse problems because uh, as things are spinning inside of your engine picture them like a blender and if uh, the oil comes in contact with the bottom of those spinny things it basically whips it up like a meringue. Uh, not a good thing. That's checking the oil. Next on my list of importance is coolant. Checking coolant is not like checking the oil. Checking oil is kind of standard on just about any any engine has a dipstick and you, and you check it that way. Coolant varies from car to car. What you're looking for is a big plastic tank. Uh, the thing to avoid, particularly when the engine is hot, is taking the radiator cap off. You don't want to take the radiator cap off when the engine is hot. Uh, what could happen in, in that case is as you remove the cap, you remove pressure from the system. For every pound of pressure on the system, it raises the boiling point of that mixture two degrees. So if you suddenly release pressure, and usually caps are about 15 pounds, uh, you lower the boiling point of that liquid significantly, which means it could just flash boil out of there. In other words, it could just come spraying up out of there in a hot mess and turn you into a giant lobster. You don't want this to happen. So uh, if the engine's hot, uh, go, to your, go to your plastic tank especially and look they have levels on the side, I'll give you a close-up of this, they have levels on the side of uh, how much, or where the coolant level is supposed to be. Now, the reason why I say it varies is because this particular one is not just an overflow tank, this is what's referred to as an expansion tank. So in other words, this plastic tank is pressurized, so in much the same way you want to avoid taking the radiator cap off when the engine is hot, you also want to avoid taking off this cap when the engine is hot and they will give you warnings on the caps themselves to let you know uh, that that is not a good idea. Uh, if you can't quite see the level, what I try to do is just jostle the car. Just bounce it a little bit and you'll be able to see the liquid sort of floating around in there a little more. MT. This car needs coolant. For their own reason, manufacturers of different vehicles seem to have gone towards making their own coolant. Uh, there are different colors, different types, the important thing is not to mix them. Just normally over the course of time, uh, a lot of the coolant is water and water will evaporate and sort of go away. So it will get low over time. Expect that to happen. 
but just be mindful whenever you are adding coolant to a car that you're adding the correct coolant because if you don't and you mix two coolants that aren't supposed to be together together you may end up with an expensive coolant flush to get all that stuff out of there because sometimes different coolants don't play nice with one another. If you uh, need to add something and you don't know what to put into it, it's always safe to add water uh, unless you live like in Minnesota and it's February. At least that'll get you by until you get the proper stuff to put in there. Checking the transmission fluid on most vehicles is done with the, with the car running. Uh, there are a few exceptions, uh, Honda's being one of them. Uh, but on this particular model, the engine needs to be running and warmed up in order to check the fluid. It has this little symbol on it. This is cold, being down here at this bottom part, that's okay. Is anything, anything down in the lower area would work for something that's cold. Anything up in the hot area would work for something that's hot. It's been my experience that when you're down to the lower dot, in between the two dots, don't add a whole quart of transmission fluid. Uh, it's usually only a half a quart between two dots on transmission fluid. So if you add a whole quart, that would be too much. Too much is actually just as bad, if not worse, than not enough because like the engine oil being too full, if the transmission is overfilled, it will cause uh, aeration in the fluid where the moving parts inside the transmission will start churning up the excess fluid inside of there and, and uh, run a whole bunch of air through an automatic transmission and that's not good. Be careful when the engine's running, moving around fans and stuff, but you check transmission fluid on most vehicles with it running. Now, as long as we're on the subject of transmission fluid, let's talk about Hondas. Hondas are different than anything else that I can think of, and different in the sense that, as I told you before, you need to check the transmission fluid as the car is running. Hondas are just the opposite. You want to check them when they're hot and with the engine off, not on. Some of these transmissions, if you try to check them, uh, what will happen is, is you've got to put the dipstick in and if the engine's running it will eat it up. You don't want that to happen. And that's what I'm here to tell you how to avoid. So on Hondas, check them when they're off. Highly recommended, only use Honda transmission fluid and Honda vehicles. That's it. Don't put Dextron, Mercron, any of that other kind of stuff. No, no, no. Honda only. This guy here, easy to check. Right there up on top. Do not overfill. This guy has little marks on the side to indicate hot and cold levels. I think the cold levels are down here and the hot levels are up here. So if the engine's hot, it should be up here. If the engine's cold, it should be down here. Pretty straightforward. This, once again, check your owner's manual to find out exactly what kind of fluid you use. Last but not least, we have brake fluid. And as you can see, there's marks on the side that tell you uh, how much it's supposed to fill up to. Now, if your brake fluid is low, I don't recommend topping it off. Why would your brake fluid get low? It's not like it's part of the engine. It's not like it evaporates and goes away. Your brake fluid gets low as your brake pads wear. As your brake pads wear and get thinner, what's gonna happen is, is that extra space is gonna be taken up by that fluid. If, if you don't have to, don't top off your brake fluid. If your brake fluid's low, it may put the light on in your dashboard to tell you that the brake fluid is low. Okay, so you got one more. The windshield washer fluid. Some of these things actually have dipsticks down inside the washer fluid itself. You know the easiest way to do it? Fill it up till it runs out. Now as usual, I have high hopes that I covered everything, but just in case I did not, you can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com, ask specific questions as a text or video response to this video. You can get a hold of me. Uh, once again, be careful of hot things. Be careful of spinny things. Be careful of things when they're running. I can't think of anything else. Other than be safe, have fun, and stay dirty.